I'm Kyle Daly, and today I'm going to be talking to you about the one thing that you're doing that's giving it away that you're an amateur content creator. It's your messy digital files. Let's go. If you're making content today, chances are you're doing it digitally. The entire industry has become digital from start to finish in the way that we design and produce content and edit videos. As powerful as it can be, it requires a certain level of organization. Professional content creators tend to have very organized file structures. They have a system in place and the names all make sense. There's a certain intuition to the way that things are structured. And when I get my hands on a file from an amateur content creator, Typically, it's a complete mess. To be a professional, you really need to be collaborating with a bunch of different partners, whether it even be your client or coworkers or colleagues. One of the first things that you can do to step up your game is to clean your room. In order to understand this concept, think about your file as your room. If it's a complete mess, you're gonna have anxiety. You're not gonna know where your things are. Your hamper's gonna be full of clean clothes getting wrinkly because you haven't folded them and put away yet. You should think about your files the same way. If you invite someone in to work on the projects that you've been working on, they should have some level of expectation that it will be clean and organized and they'll know where to find things. Creativity is a very spontaneous process. Inspiration can strike you at any moment and you wanna get in and start making things and start seeing your vision come to life. The thing is, you can't just ignore all the necessary components of keeping an organized file as you're going along creating things. You're gonna end up with a complete mess on your hands at the end of the process. It's gonna take even more time to try to reorganize and collect things and put them in the right place. So the key to doing this successfully is to build habits that allow you to organize as you go. You need to develop a tendency to organize, something you're doing without much conscious thought that allows you to be spontaneous and creative while simultaneously, subconsciously, keeping projects organized and tidy. I'll give you a couple of the key indicators that I see when I see digitally unorganized people. The first is a messy desktop. You all know what I'm talking about. There are hundreds of files strewn all over your desktop and there's really no sense of order to it. The desktop is not a place to store files. Things should only live there temporarily, if at all, and you should have a system in place to move them. The messy downloads folder. This is the one that I think gets a lot of young people. You'll download a song from the internet. You'll drag it directly into your project from the downloads folder without considering where that song was. You go and send that project over to someone else, and all of a sudden it has offline media because it's linked to your local system. Every time you download something from the internet, it's gotta have a home. Strange naming conventions. Final, 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 dashes, underscores, what do you do? There needs to be a consistency to the naming of the files in your project. Folders. Think about creating a folder structure so that it gives all the media and all the items of your project a home. Before I jump into the most important tool that's gonna help you with this, think about it from this perspective. If you, the next time you're in your project, move just one file into its correct home, that would be a significant step towards creating a digital organization habit. Just one, that's all you need to do. The most important thing I can tell you is to use a piece of software called Post Haste. Post Haste is a software by Digital Rebellion and it's so simple and it's free. Post Haste will change the way that you work. So now I'm gonna jump into Post Haste and show you guys a little bit about how this works. This is my Medium article where I wrote all of this information out as well if you wanna have a read. Let's go to digitalrebellion.com slash post haste. We're gonna download for Mac because that's the system we're on, but there is a PC version. Here's my hypocrisy where I'm gonna just delete some files I no longer need in here. FX console from Video Copilot is a great tool if you don't have that, but we'll get into that later. Let's go post haste. I already have this installed, but I'll just show you. Walk through, just drag this right into your applications folder. One of the things I like to do to keep a clean desktop is to keep my dock minimal. So I have no items on my dock permanently and to get through most of my applications, I'll just do a command or an Apple spacebar and let's open post haste. Now this is the post haste window. It's a very simple interface. You have project templates. There can be multiple templates project number, client, and name. A project number like this, I use a six digit code and I generate a unique ID for each project using a coda.io doc, which is something else I can get into if you have questions. I have clients, which is usually a short acronym to describe whatever the client is that I'm working with. And then the project description. These templates have an AE folder, a Premiere Pro folder, a media and graphics, and that's it. And one of the things that you can do is add an After Effects CC 2019 project. This bracketed file name that says template, this will be replaced by whatever the project name is at the time 
that you actually create this project. So let's drag a 2019 project into AE. Let's do the same thing with Premiere Pro. You'll notice that this has the same bracketed template, so it's gonna rename that file. And truly, this is the most bare bones version of this that I could possibly ever need. And I like to keep it this simple so that it's easier to add on with proper structure than it is to have too much and need to remove some. You can create unique projects for each type of project that you need to work on. If this was a design project, maybe I would say this is a Photoshop and I could create a different folder structure and it's got the template name. So I cleared out all my preferences beforehand so that I could create something from scratch for you guys. And one of the things that I was missing, I just remembered, is an exports folder. This is a folder that I love to use to keep my exports organized. So I go exports and then I'll create another folder. This one will say delivery and this one will say rough cut. Now, as I'm exporting versions of my project, I can select the destination to be in the Rough Cuts folder if it's something that I'm just exporting for review or the delivery folder if it's gonna go directly to the client. Great, so this is my template setup. Now I'll go back, I've named this project, I'm gonna go create project. Now it's automatically gonna create this in the destination that I pre-designated, which is in my projects folder on Dropbox. And look, it's named right after the master project file. So that's great. The next thing that you can do is pre-populate this project with folders in Premiere. So you'll see I'll open this up and it really won't have anything inside of it already. It's just a blank project. But if I wanted to, I could go, let's close this, Command Shift W while the project window is selected to close just an entire project. So let's jump back into Post Haste. I have it to automatically quit. Let's go into this template. Let's double click to open the template project itself. This you can see is located a destination that I chose, which is my Dropbox and assets, a software post haste folder. And this is where my YouTube project post haste template file lives. All right, so this has the actual Premiere project file. One of the things you can do is add a folder structure to this project that mimics what your folder structure is in the finder level project. So let's create a new bin. One of the ones I use for Premiere all the time is sequences. And go another new bin, call this one graphics. Another new bin, call this one media. I'll create a rough cuts folder, put this in sequences, create a finals or delivery folder. This is typically where I'll drag the final version of my sequence in so that it's organized. And then let's go nest. This is a great place to keep all your nested sequences as you create them to create certain effects in Premiere. Let's go audio, let's go footage, let's go AE. Now this is a pretty bare bones structure, but it's enough where as you're importing things, you can have a designated place to store all the media. You know that all your footage is gonna go here. You know that all your music and audio is gonna go here. You could even go down and call this one music and then have a second one and call this one sound effects. When you're happy with this, you go ahead and save. It's gonna save over the template. Now, I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna go back to post haste. So it automatically version this number. I'm gonna call this one client description two. I'm gonna to go to create project. Now in my designated project location, I can go to Premiere Pro. I can open this project and it's gonna have all of these sequences here for me, ready to go. So this will create consistency with every project that I start. They'll always have the same structure of files at the finder level and at the project level. You're gonna to wanna to do the same thing with your After Effects project. Now in After Effects, we can create something that mimics the same structure as our Premiere and Finder projects. Here, we'll need a comps folder. This one will require a pre-comps folder. Let's go media, let's go graphics. You can even go as far as to add designated comps. So I want a 24 FPS, 1920 HD comp, call this one master. So now I'll always start with a master. I could even have a solid built into this project. So let's say I always want to start with a black solid, save this, save it over the template. Now, next time I go in to post haste, we'll make another new project. We'll open a, and it's got all of our folders and our solids folder. So this is it. This is what post haste looks like. This is what post haste does. It gives you a method of organization that is very intelligible. So I can read here everything at a glance. All my numbers are the same, they're in line. And I can see the project description and I have the consistency in each folder structure 
that allows me to build the habits of organization. When someone gets this project and it's organized like this and things are named and have an intuition, they're gonna be floored by how well they can receive this work, pick it up and make the changes that they might need to make and deliver the things that they need to deliver. The greatest thing about this, I'll go back into the screen recording real quick. So if we go into post haste, our templates, these are little files. They're called .pht files, they're post haste template files. You can actually go into preferences, go into this template location and change this. So what you can do is make this a Dropbox link and sync your templates over multiple devices. If you had a team and you were all on a shared Dropbox, you could have your templates folder at a shared location so everyone was working from the same template of projects. This is especially helpful in teams when you're trying to develop consistency of file structure across all of your editors or whoever it is that you're working with. It works on a NAS if you're on like a shared storage space of some sort. There's a bunch of ways to use this collaboratively as well as with yourself to just keep yourself organized. But the way it works as a team tool is incredible. I keep them in my Dropbox software miscellaneous post haste. Now I have a new photoshop.pht, here's my youtube.pht. If I wanted to edit this folder structure from anywhere else aside from post haste, I can actually just jump in here, show package contents. I've got the file structure exactly as it is, and here's where these template files live. And so you can just jump back in here and edit the template at any point if you need to. So when you edit this template, it's gonna ripple through to everyone who's pointing to that location for your PHT files. So any changes you make here will be affected across all of your editors. That's all I have for you today. I hope this was helpful. Please let me know in the comments below if you're using Post Taste already. If you aren't, if you're going to start adding it into your workflow, feel free to hit me up uh, with any questions that you have and happy editing, happy, happy, happy content creating and clean your rooms.